right, you guys. Hello again. All right, my friends, it's time for part six. And part six is probably gonna be the most sort of like out of time episode as I had to sort of do different things at different times and it, it just had to be done like that for the episodes to make sense. But regardless, this one is all gonna be about the trim, all the carpentry work, all the, you know, casing around the doors and the baseboards and everything. I'm gonna be reusing slash recycling basically all of the old stuff that I took off. Plus, because we have a couple of new doors and door frames, uh, we're gonna have to put some new trim on there that is hopefully gonna be the same as the old, just for the whole thing to make sense. And we're also gonna paint all of these doors and all the trim and all the walls. So, once we have all of that done, it's finally gonna look like a beautiful room, just ready to slap those acoustic products on. Of course, I'm gonna use a bunch of new tools that I got, cause to do the job properly, you need proper tools. So it should be an interesting one. Let's see if I can pull this one off without any major damage to myself or the house or these brand new walls. <laughs> Let's get into it, here we go. Without major damage. Snazzy. It's only glued together, it's not too bad. That's about right. Man, is there a lot of dust in here. All right, just before we get started, let me kind of break down the trim situation for you. The house that we bought is around 100 years old and it's been renovated slash extended about 10 years ago. And so that 100 year old house, before it was renovated, it already had some trim in there and everything, right? And unfortunately for us right now, the previous owners, when they were renovating, uh, they decided to recreate the original trim, which is a 100 year old trim. So they made it custom because they couldn't buy it anywhere. To me personally, I am not crazy about it at all. It doesn't look anything special. I was certain certain that we're gonna go into Home Depot, find it in the shelf, just get it. I'll break up my miter saw, we're gonna do the thing, but yeah, it, uh, and this is the trim that, it, that we have in the house right now. Now, to my eye, it doesn't look anything special at all, and I'm guessing 100 years ago, it was a completely stock trim that you could just buy anywhere. Um, but I suppose in a hundred years, things change a little bit, and we could not find this absolutely anywhere. And trust me, we searched. We spent about probably like a good month before we decided we were going custom. And I don't know, you tell me, does this look special? I don't know. So there's this big, like regular, just board. It's got this kind of sliver, sort of like a divider, slightly wider board on top, and then this profile at the very top. So that's for the casing and the baseboard, you would not believe is actually even harder to find because we actually kind of got close to that one. But this one, I could not find not even close. And also this one is also pretty much impossible to find. So needless to say, I'm gonna reuse as much as I can. I swear, dude, if I knew that this whole trim situation is gonna escalate to these, to these heights, oh boy. Socks! Turns out our first neighbor over here, he has all the machines and everything. He has like a nice table saw that takes those bits and yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not there just yet, I guess. But I mean, you still need those tools to, um, to do the work. The guy has the coolest name ever, and I'm not even kidding, Laser. <laughs> How cool is that? Laser is gonna help us out. Yeah, let's go get some stock material and uh, laser cut some custom trim. These blades can work with anything. These blades work it all out. This one is not the right blade I got here. The one on, on, on the thing I got there is the right cutter. So I'm just showing you know, what, what, what the shape is gonna be, you see? That's nice. Two passes, see? And yep. then I sand it out and then it's gonna be perfect. This is the baseboard. And yeah. the size of the straight board that this fits on, right? That's yeah, that's right. right, cool. Everything is a couple of runs and some sanding and yeah, it's a bit of work, but, but I'll get it. I know that. Seriously, thank you so much for doing this. Like, no problem. I cannot right. overstate that. And this is a guide that you use, right? Like, or this is what do you call a fence? Yeah, like a fence. Ah. Fence jig, I guess. A little bit of a jig. It's too far up. 
think that's about right, right there. You really want to touch it, and that should be it. <laughs> First part of the high and all this is good. So what I mean, we're gonna go down from there. So what I do. See that that one? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect right there. You see? The dip, mm -hmm. the dip means a lot here. If we go too deep, then you change the shape of it, that's right? right? That's so right. When I go there, this is half and half. And I gotta do it perfect. And I might have to leave a line in there, a little line. Yeah. Now I'm gonna put the other one back in again. One. Set the fence on the border. Clamp it. I'm gonna do this side first. They're gonna put me in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna make a big star out of me. Good. So right there. No pencil behind your ear. What kind of a carpenter are you? I don't put it behind my ears. <laughs> my ears not big enough to carry. <laughs> there you go. Sure. Okay, that's why I made this to cover if the bit breaks or they hit if it breaks mm -hmm, it just mm -hmm. to hold it in a bit anyway, right? Makes yeah. sense. Whenever you're reusing your trim, you want to pull out all of these brad nails just so, so you can work with the material better. But yeah, definitely get one of, one of these. It's kind of tricky though. You have to apply just enough pressure to not snap it in half like that, right? Some of these pieces are harder than others. But, oh, yeah, just like that. Hmm, I don't think that one is coming out. Yep. Maybe go over it with like a piece of sandpaper or something. So that way when you lay it, it's not gonna cause any problems. See if this one is gonna work. This one is not gonna go. Look at that 90 degree angle, look at that. Yeah, not the best, not the best of jobs there. So I actually just figured out a slightly better technique for this. So you grab it closer to the end of the nail and then it pulls a little bit better and I definitely had less trouble with them snapping that way. You kind of want to pull from as far back as you can. They snap a whole lot less. Honestly, I don't think I've had one snap on me this way. Some of these are just nasty, dude. So while Laser was making the rest of that trim, I decided to go ahead and finish the restroom at least. Since we didn't change anything about it, everything was basically already cut to fit. So that went through pretty smooth, I'm gonna say. But then of course, once I was all done with that, there was a huge issue with the restroom door frame that I needed to fix. Because we added the 5 8 drywall, it's not flush with the wall anymore. The old drywall used to be up to here, and then we added this, and it's literally, I have to add basically five eighths. And I actually have some leftover pieces that might be good uh, for just this application. Uh, I remember when I took down that door frame for the office door. Yeah, we're probably gonna use that here. I also need to move this five eighths forward. So that means I have to plug up the holes. Yeah, make new ones and make it all nice and sturdy and durable. I have a bit of a plan how to do it. I think we're gonna use Bondo. I wish I had a table saw, but it's definitely possible to do these like like long straight cuts with uh, just a skill saw and a little bit of rigging. So I mark it first using a factory edge like here, and then I'm gonna clamp this together at just the right distance like that. And I'm also using this scrap piece here to hold this so it doesn't collapse, so it keeps it nice and straight. Gonna wait for the glue to dry. 
fill all the gaps up with Fondo, fill some new holes and call it good. Since we're doing this properly, I went out and bought a table saw. It's a small table saw, but I think it should do the trick. Got all the safety features installed. I wish this table is a little less wobbly, but I think we should be okay. Let's make a first cut. Oh, look at that. That's a nice cut right there. This thing is super dangerous. Don't do any of this stuff without studying all the safety features and what you need to do with your hands, what to do with your hands when. Take it seriously. It's a dangerous machine. Done for today. I cleaned up the edges of all this trim that I'm gonna reuse. So those are all basically ready to be fastened. And we still need to cut out all the crown molding and whatever it's called. I might have to do something to the original crown molding to make it a little bit shorter. I'm not exactly sure. It's definitely gonna be tight. It's only a question how tight. So we're gonna actually open up one of these boxes here. We brought all of these over from the garage a couple of months ago so they wouldn't get wet during the winter. So I'm gonna unbox one of those base traps, kind of put it against and see how it kind of gels with these. These are the crown molding. It's relatively tall. So not a whole lot of clearance towards the ceiling there. So it's already assembled. You see, this is the back of it. Fasteners, this and that. Innovative acoustic solutions. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, these are nice. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly the centerpiece of this, but it's, it's really, really nice. My first time ever opening an acoustic product. It doesn't smell like anything. So, I mean, it's sort of like that. Well, like I said, it's gonna be tight. Maybe I should like mark this. Here's the moment of truth. Ah, nice. It's perfect. It's perfect. This can actually, this should go lower actually. The reveal on this is like a quarter inch, which makes it like here. So there is, there's more than plenty right there. There's like three inches. So there's no modification. We're gonna have the same crown molding across the house. Great. Okay, so it's time to start fastening these. I'm still not exactly done cutting, but this particular door, I think, is all done. So we're gonna do a test run. If I took it apart, I should be able to put it back together. So, yeah. I actually bought a tool for this, especially. Surprise! Um, it's called a brad nailer or brad nail gun charger Gun wow, that's that's significant Let's hope we don't do anything stupid So the new old ones, looks like we're gonna have to shorten them just a hair. I suppose the frame is a little bit different, so it asks for, we're talking like eighth, eighth of an inch or a quarter inch, something super stupid like that, which means we have to disassemble all this, cut all the pieces individually, reassemble it, but eh, it is what it is. That's a quarter inch difference.
So this is a 50 year old router that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace for like 20 bucks. Let's see if it does the trick. So you see here, we had to adjust. It's terrible. Uh, we had to adjust the door frame. So I got a bit of a bend here. See how this part kind of protrudes further out than this one? And that kind of disappears right around here. So what I did is that I routed out a little awful and squiggly line <laughs> uh, so that that edge kind of falls into it and it just fits really beautiful. I mean, nobody's ever gonna see that. And then once it fits, there is no gap all the way around. The good thing is that I'm doing uh, paint grade trim, so pretty much any mistake that I make, it's fixable with a little bit of wood putty. It's a whole lot of fiddling and a lot of like really like kind of making things work. This is the aftermath right here. A lot of casualties. So I think before we move on to the baseboards, I'm just gonna clean up a little bit and uh, make some room and do the baseboards then. Not bad at all for my first time. All the trim is installed. Gonna plug a couple of holes here and there and make it all nice and pretty. Prime it, and then we're gonna paint it. This is a little bit of Bono work that needs to be ground down. Cause that's actually a spot where I had to join two pieces of trim together, but they weren't perfect because they were kind of done by hand by, <laughs> even though they were laser cut, they were still done by hand. And so, because they were from two different pieces, um, they didn't quite blend like perfectly. So I had to blend that in a little bit with just a little bit of that bono there. This was really difficult. This is this part here is basically why I had to get um, the table saw because it needed to be super straight. The frame was actually a little bit proud by a particular amount. So to get this straight, you needed like a little spacer here that was perfectly even throughout the length. But we did it! We did it! Looks great! Super happy with it! Now we have a bit of an issue with these doors, which is <laughs> they need to come off because of these hinges and how close they are to the, to the trim and everything. It's definitely a two-person job, so I'm gonna have Ivana help me out and uh, hopefully no one gets hurt. <laughs> ah, we got this. We got this. But yeah, once we do that, I'm gonna prime everything. <laughs> Well, okay, that was dumb. I'm rushing things, it seems. It's definitely not a good idea to paint with these aerosol cans uh, indoors. Should've known better. I spent like two cans and it's already like super difficult to breathe. So what I think I'm gonna do is go to bed, get some, get some rest. It looks like I need it. I'm gonna get some primer in a can and spray all that stuff on with my with my new spray gun. So that should hopefully be a little bit less like stinky and dangerous. <laughs> but anyway, I'm off to bed. Uh, hopefully tomorrow is gonna be a bit of a better day, but yeah, see you then. So there is a bunch of these spots that I didn't prep well enough before I started spraying this. I spent, yeah, I don't know, about a good three hours on these two um, problematic door frames. So now I think we should have way better results. Just getting the last of it. This is mostly residue from um, the expanding foam that they put in there for acoustic purposes. I think I was just like way too excited to get started with the, with priming, but sometimes you just gotta, gotta spend some more time. Prep it right and it's gonna be beautiful. How do you like our, our little painting jig here? Each of these doors is insanely heavy, so it's a little bit scary. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. All right, 
This is our paint spray system. It's a pretty neat little system actually. There's no compressor. There's just this like, I think they call it a turbine or whatever. And it just drives the air through here, goes through this hose into the gun, and then it disperses the paint or whatever you have, lacquer, who knows, into like a bazillion little droplets and that's uh, what makes the finish so nice. I'm super excited actually to paint all this stuff. The one trick is that you have to kind of thin down the heavier kind of latex waterborne paints. But yeah, this looks about right. Three, two, one. The whole thing has to run out in 37 to 50 seconds. Uh, almost, it needs to be thinned down just like a little bit more. So that's 50 and it's almost gone. A little bit more water and we should be good. But it's basically like consistency of like raw milk. This is skim milk now, like 2% milk or one, 1% 1 milk. This is 1%, that was three or 3.2. This is apparently, if you want a dot or a line, this is how much fluid you want. There's quite a bit of control, actually, that you have with this thing. It's kind of impressive. It's just you can't do really, like, large amounts of paint, right? You kind of have to refill relatively often. Painting onesie! Mask! the next morning and it's not bad. The doors are looking pretty good for the first coat. I'm gonna throw another one on there. No runs, thankfully, but I did go a little bit safe. You see how they're still kind of streaky. The runs are definitely solvable, but it takes a little bit of, well, elbow grease, really. So you pretty much have to sand it smooth. Just gonna give them all a nice light sanding, wipe them down, and do it again. And then we're off to paint. Actual paint. All right, we're looking absolutely beautiful. Look at this. It's had a chance to dry. We're gonna let this cure a little bit longer before I get to sanding it. And oh yeah, the frames are absolutely great. I did have a couple of more tiny, tiny little runs. I'm not sure if you can see them anymore. I think I got rid of all of them. It was way way better than it was. I mean, I just put like a little sandpaper over a like this is just the regular stir stick and it works a little bit better than those sponges because it's actually flat, right? It's kind of nasty with these frames cuz all the the paint kind of pulls up here, right? In the in the very corner. It's kind of challenging to to do. The flat surfaces are much more straightforward. You just spray and pray. <laughs> Before we get to actually painting the doors and the trim and everything with because this was primer so far like but now we, we're actually going to move on to the actual paint i have to caulk everything which is see these like gaps in between somewhere where it wasn't necessarily a tight fit and this is normal procedure like all the carpenters do this you got to fill all of those and make them all nice to get that seamless look so we're almost there with caulking. As usual, when, it, when you deal with, with caulk, it's crucial that you keep things wet. And so you put some of the caulk in, and then you wipe it off with your finger like that, and then you make a big old mess like that. I tried doing this without wetting my finger all the time, and it's actually way worse. It's almost like icing your cake. 
But believe it or not, this is the professional way. It's actually kind of satisfying when you do it and you look at it afterwards and it's all like nicely blended. There's no gaps, there's no lines. This is actually water-based. So it washes off with water super easily, but then once it sets, it's actually a little flexible. So when the, the house moves, those micro movements that happen between these pieces, like the caulking kind of moves with them. See how it's like filling it in? And you wet your finger. Kind of satisfying, yeah? Then you kind of make it all nice and pretty. Wipe the rest off with a wet cloth, and you're good to go. And you should do it everywhere, wherever you have a gap, you should do this before you paint. All right, my friends, the time has finally come to spray all of this, the actual color. The prep work took forever, but since we're spray painting everything, I really had to make sure that there's like zero clearance everywhere so I taped everything off nice and precise you know all the lines needed to be really tight also you have to kind of sand everything smooth make sure all the little holes and dents and god knows they were <laughs> there were some dents in there you kind of have to make sure that all of those are filled and sanded and all nice and ready to be painted and you also kind of have to get a rag like a like a damp rag and uh, pick up all the dust afterwards that's also so, seems to be important, so I did it. And yeah, so far so good. Now we're gonna put our painting onesie on, get my breathing gear, and start painting. Here we go. We're not gonna see a major change, it's still gonna be white, it's just still, I think the texture is gonna change a little bit from this primer, because this is really matte, and I think we're gonna get a nice result. But yeah, enough chit chat, I'm like, I'm eager, but I'm also kind of afraid to get started because there's no turning back. If you start spraying, you kind of have to spray the whole room to keep the wet edge on. So, all these things. Uh. God, everything is nice and dry and it looks just beautiful. It looks amazing. The finish is just like, mmm. See that kind of sheen that it's got? This looks absolutely beautiful. All the blemishes are hidden. The doors look great. 
all those holes that I did here. Absolutely great. That spray gun is something else, man. The finish that you can get, mm, just beautiful. It's tricky though with the prep, you have to kind of tape everything off and be really careful with where you're spraying and there's like a lot of dust that is being created by that process, but you know what, the finish is totally worth it. It's like a semi-professional tool, this one that I bought, and it's basically, it doesn't have the highest pressure ever. Because of that, the paint needs to be thin, and then <laughs> you get these stupid runs. And this is the one and only board that gave me trouble. Easy fix though, I'm just gonna sand that bit, uh, tape everything off, and then just spray that board real quick and we're gonna be done. But super, super exciting. I mean, it looks absolutely great. So let's get Ivana in here so she can help me um, get these doors back on and uh, we can see how it looks and hopefully move on to paint. It's gonna be awesome. Oh man. This feels, I mean, I mean, this, this finish is like absolutely gorgeous. It looks a little bit too white now, but that's gonna change in just a little bit. I was kind of growing tired of that unfinished look, but this is, this is definitely um, this is something a little nicer. So what I'm gonna have to do now is mask all of this trim off. Uh, just around the edges. I'm gonna get some frock tape, which is supposed to be uh, like better it's for those lines. I'm not gonna start cutting all the lines in by hand because I think I'm gonna suck at it and it, with frock tape it's just gonna be much better. I'm also gonna have to get all these pot lights out. I'm gonna roll the ceiling a couple of times. Not that I'm changing color there or anything, I just think it's gonna be nice. <sighs> well, I just found out there's some more work to be done. Try it out this um, base trap that is supposed to go in that upper corner towards the ceiling. And the current back wall speaker is not going to play well with these at all. It like covers it about halfway, so we're going to have to fix that. More drywall work, gotta love it. Let's get to it. All right, so we have everything masked off beautifully with that frog tape. I think that's gonna leave a really, really nice sharp line. So to be honest with you, for some reason, this wall is uh, the one that I've been looking forward to the most. Cause yeah, that, that level five drywall was something else. So this is curing beautifully, by the way. I'm not sure if it comes across the camera, but it's just <laughs> So I waited a couple of days for it to cure completely. Now I masked that wall off, so everything is ready for, for the grain. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> That look great or what? You can't ask much more from a musician, I would say. Looks pretty damn good. Sorry about the echo. There's literally like nothing in here right now. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super happy. Super happy. This this black wall turned out like really, really nice. Yeah, not gonna complain too much about that one. Um, the gray is beautiful. The lines are super sharp. Frog tape did its thing, for sure. That one was really nasty to do. The doors look absolutely amazing. Absolutely nothing to complain about there. Turned out absolutely beautiful. Now while you were looking, I finished this little restroom as well. The paint turned out amazing. I went with white and this uh, kind of dark, heavy blue. Looks really nice. Way better than that old yellow, that's for sure. The office in here looks just as good. I actually had to remake this one because I think I lost the original one. Still have to patch up that wallpaper, don't worry about that. Same goes for here. But yeah, the door 
looks just amazing here as well. And let me show you the downstairs. That was also pretty involved. The walls turned out great. We had one side painted all black to match our stage, and then the other side, the other side is something else. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that's pretty satisfying. But it's also a very nice change from that just dull gray. This is kind of like more brave. This door probably turned out the best nice and smooth everywhere and the best part is that on the inside it's actually black <laughs> it was a pretty daunting process though like I had to mask off the door twice paint one side first then mask it off really well and then paint the other side I also spray painted this uh, hardware for this side of the door, a nice matte black, just so that when we're filming, we don't get any weird glares or everything. We can absolutely use this corner right now, so it's great. Also, I managed to find these switches in black as well. That turned out really nice. These handrails also turn out absolutely great. I spray painted them as well. I had this like super sketchy painting rig in my garage where they could hang. But seriously, all the trouble is absolutely worth it with a spray gun, it just, it has an amazing feel to it. This finish is gorgeous. I mean, just listen to that. Beautiful. So yeah, um, I'm gonna call this an absolute success. It definitely took a while to get done, but hey, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And sometimes that takes time, but that's okay. The next step is gonna be even better <laughs> because we're about to start putting the acoustic products on. I also got those LED strips, so we're all ready to go. This wall is gonna get covered in concrete, print, anyway, not real concrete, but you know what I mean. Yeah, super, super happy with this. If you enjoyed this, uh, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. I mean, what are you waiting for, really? Thank you all so much for, for being here with me and sharing all this, like, nonsense. <laughs> so I hope this gives you maybe inspiration to start your own projects or to maybe you know, finish stuff that you haven't finished yet, or maybe you just enjoy all the stupid innuendos and me getting electrocuted, but thank you for watching regardless. So, I personally just can't wait to finish the studio and like, get some new music out for you. That's gonna be, that's gonna be a blast. But you know what, there's plenty more work to be done, so let's not get carried away with that stuff. Really hope you like this episode, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao!